Hey there, scientists. Today, we are looking the, at the external structures of a wild rose. And what we're going to do is we're going to work to identify the external structures of the wild rose. And you're going to work to describe the functions served by those structures of the rose. So as you can see here, we have different callout buttons on our diagram. And what we're asking ourselves to begin with is what are all plants, including wild roses, made up of? And you know that they are made up of different structures, which are identified here by our callout buttons. An example of one of these structures could be the roots. That would be a structure of a wild rose including some of these others that we see on these call out buttons here. The question we ask ourselves is, what do all these structures have in common? And we know that all of these structures are observable on the outside of the plant. And every one of these structures is important for the growth and the survival of the plant. So let's start pushing some of these buttons and see what some of these call outs are telling us. What we have here is if we look at this very first one, we're going to find that we have the flower. And the flower of the rose is meant to help the plant to reproduce. The next question we can ask ourselves is, what's the function of the petals? Well, those petals are going to attract bees and other insects to the flower. So we look at this beautiful rose right here and we say to ourselves, how are these insects important to the plant's survival? Well, the insects are going to carry pollen from one flower to another. When an insect leaves the pollen on that flower, fruit and seeds can grow. We can look at this beautiful flower again and ask ourselves, well, how is this thing going to protect itself? And we know that those sharp thorns are going to help to protect the plant from those hungry animals. And then again, you have to ask yourself, like, why does this plant need protection from hungry animals? And what can you infer of that animals are going to do so that they don't get pricked by these, by these thorns? The next thing we're going to look at, the next structure here, is we're going to ask ourselves which structure helps the plant get as much sunlight as possible. Well, the structure that helps get it the most sunlight as possible is actually the stem. So how does the stem do this? Well, the stem can bend towards the sun, which helps the leaves get as much light as possible. And what's another function of the stem? The stem supports the leaves and the flowers. So which structure here is going to take in the materials and the mineral from the soil? Well, you're right. That is going to be the roots. They're going to take in water and nutrients from the soil. Well, we at, we've gone through all of these structures here except for the leaves. So what is the function of the leaves? What do they do? Well, the leaves are gonna use water from the soil, carbon dioxide from the air, and energy from sunlight to make food for the plant. So all of those elements together come together in the leaf so that the plant has the energy that it needs in order to continue to grow and thrive. So right here, we have figured out what are all of the structures that are on the outside of a wild rose. The question that you're going to work to understand, scientists, is when you look at all of these structures, which of these structures are specifically for growth, which of these structures are for survival, and which of these structures are to help that rose reproduce?